Hey guys, what's going on? Today's video is going to be on why and how I sell the tackle that I don't use anymore. Real fast, let's do one of those um, Q&A videos. I'll leave a comment in this video and you guys can reply to that comment and I'll answer those comments in another video. So um, if you're going to leave a comment about this video, leave it below, but if you want me to answer your comment in another video, reply to mine. So uh, we'll do that. I'll answer those uh, comments. Now that video will be up. Let's, let's go for next Thursday. So you guys have some time to leave comments. I usually mention that I sell tackle when I make my tackle warehouse unboxing videos because you guys always ask how I pay for the new tackle. And that's what I do. I sell tackle that I don't use anymore. You know, it's still good tackle. I just, over the years, you can see that the tackle accumulates a lot. I've been at this a while. You know, it tends to mount up. Each year, I'll go through my plastics and I'll just kind of weed out some of the stuff that I know is not going to work for me. Fishing that stained in muddy water, you know. Uh, the stuff that maybe I found a new favorite. Like example, you know, I love a chicker craw. I used to buy, you know, I really don't use the three inches. Then the four inch chicker craw was one of my favorites for a long time. Then they came out with the crazy leg chicker craw. And that's pretty much a chicker craw with, uh, I guess, the crazy legs coming out front. Then they came out with the chicker quad, which is a chicker craw. Instead of having the actual claws, it has more of a like a grub tails on it, which swim more, plus it has the crazy leg. So I really don't use the crazy leg anymore because I use the chicker quads. You know, it moves more water, and uh, like I said, fishing that stained in muddy water, I want to move as much water as possible, so I really don't use the crazy legs. Still a great bait, just, you know, I'm going to use the one with the most action. And if I just want a standard chicker craw, I just cut off the crazy legs. And, um, you know, I used to buy those uh, three inch, four inch, and I realized fishing the lakes that I fish that the three inch, you know, I never really did well on. You know, when the bike gets tough, you always hear it to downsize. Well, I, I feel that that plays a role in clear water, but not so much in that stained and muddy water. You know, if you're downsizing in muddy water where it's, they don't have much visibility the way it is, and then you make it smaller, you know, I, to me, the bike gets even tougher. So, Really, in that stained and muddy water, when the bite's tough, I just slow down. I really don't downsize my baits a whole lot. So I really don't use the smaller craws anymore. You know, like I said, all the soft plastics I used to buy, I used to buy in both sizes, or if they had three sizes, I'd buy a three inch, four inch, and a five inch. And same deal with the five inch. You know, to me, uh, that five inch, it targets, or your five inch or bigger, just depends on you know, what company it is. But what I'm just saying is that bigger craw, uh, it targets more bigger fish. I don't believe there's a ton of big fish on the lakes that I fish, and I'm just looking for more bites, so I kind of stopped throwing that bigger crawl. You know, I keep a handful of them, but with all the different brands and styles that I have, I kind of got rid of the majority of my big stuff. You know, colors, you know, I've, I've, I've learned what colors have worked as well. You know, again, in the beginning, you know, all oh, this color is cool, this color is cool. It looks cool to me, but it didn't work in the lakes that I fish. So, you know, I just kind of weed through colors, you know, different sizes and all that. That's kind of how I look at it, and, uh, you know, when I find a new favorite, I don't use the old favorite as much anymore, so it's just taking up space. So I might as well sell it to someone that can uh, possibly use it. You know, it's just taking up space here. Really, I don't want to build another wall of shelves to store tackle that I'm not going to use. So, kind of what I did this year, like I just broke down, went through all my boxes. I bet I got another 15, 20 pounds here that I'm selling. I already sold it to a guy. But, um, you know, I kind of like going through it all as well because then I, I forgot about baits. You know, I put those up in the lineup that I'm going to use these because I forgot I had them. And, um, you know, just makes room for newer stuff that's coming out. But, um, anyways, that's why I sell tackle. You know, to obviously to afford the new, but just to get rid of what I'm not using. How do I sell it? This is what you guys are asking the most. And, um, you know, I didn't really plan on making a video on this, but you guys ask this all the time since, like I said, I put that in the Stack Warehouse video. So, okay. Uh, as far as how do I sell? First off, obviously get all your stuff together. And what I do too, I usually I pay shipping. Because you gotta think, you know, for, for one to realize you're not gonna get what you paid for the gear, whether it's soft plastics, reels, rods, whatever it is you're selling, you're not gonna get what you paid for. And you gotta keep in uh, keep in mind what the stuff may go on sale for. You know, you wanna make sure you give people a deal. And if you're gonna pay shipping like I do, uh, you don't wanna like get all your soft plastics and sell to like ten different guys because that's ten different shipping cost you're gonna to have to pay. I pretty much sell in bulk. You know, I get everything together and I try and find that one or two guys that want to buy everything. That's why I give them an even better deal. That way I can get it gone 
with just one shipping cost. Now keep in mind, you know, selling 15, 20 pounds of plastic, that's going to be expensive too. That may cost me 20, 25 bucks to ship, but it's less hassle just dealing with one guy. So I recommend, you know, get all your stuff together and then just put a bulk sale up. First, I'll look for, you know, I'll, I'll get everything together and I'll ask my, my local friends, you know, friends that live around me or somebody that wants to meet me driving. That way uh, we can avoid the shipping right off the bat. Uh, if none of my local friends are interested in anything that I'm selling, then I do have a couple guys that I've met through YouTube that uh, I go to them first. They always ask me if I'm selling anything. Um, great couple guys that I've met, you know, and uh, they're usually interested in whatever it is I'm selling. So that works out for both of us. I'm giving them a deal. I sell the tackle. It works out great. From there, I'll go to my personal Facebook page, my Tackle Junkie Facebook page, and usually Instagram. Again, hopefully I can find somebody that I know, not necessarily that um, is close to me. I don't mind shipping, but I, I just like selling to somebody that I know. Just I'd rather do that. Anyways, that's why I go for my, my Facebook page uh, first, just because you know I do know a lot of people on there. Uh, just from YouTube, we've become friends. I talk a lot with a lot of you guys. So again, I'm looking for somebody that I know. From there, I go to these couple pages on Facebook, which this is probably what most of you guys will want to do. And um, these are pages I've sold on in the past. And I totally recommend them. The first one here is, if you guys can see that or not, I'm sure you can. I'll put this down in the description as well. It's Bass, Baits, Buy, and Barter. Okay, this is one of the pages that I would recommend here. It's got 59,000 members, and uh, you know you just post your stuff, follow all the rules, and like I said, you almost have 60,000 people seeing your post. There's a good chance you'll sell it on the site. From there, I go to, let me pull it up here, Bass Fishing, Bass Fishing Yard Sale. Now, I haven't sold on this one in a while. I sold on this one. If you guys remember when I used to use all the Bass Pro Gear, when I was selling all of that, I sold a lot of that on this page here. Now, the only down to this page is, well, it put it this way. It was this way when I was selling on it that uh, they had to approve your picture or approve your post before it would go up. Sometimes it takes a day or two. So if you're looking to sell in a hurry, sometimes you have to wait for them to approve your post on the bass fishing yard sale. But, um, you know, other than that, it's no big deal. And the other one, Bass Based Buy and Barter page, uh, that one goes up instantly. And administration is always on the post, keeping an eye on things, make sure everything's going good. So... But um, that's the two pages I would recommend to sell on. Bass Fishing Yard Sale and Bass Baits Buy and Barter. So guys, that should wrap it up. That's pretty much why I sell and how I sell. So don't forget to leave a comment down below. I'll answer those in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon.